donor, schnitzel, curried sausage. We Germans like meat on our plate, and most of us like it several times a day. The Sunday roast has long since become an everyday meal. We eat twice as much meat as a hundred years ago. That means, in your lifetime, four cows, four sheep, twelve geese, thirty-seven ducks, forty-six pigs, forty-six turkeys, and nine hundred and forty-five chickens. Which puts us well up front compared with the rest of the world. We eat over ten times more meat than people in Mozambique, and twenty-seven times more than people in India. And if you think you can get that amount of meat feeding animals this way, sorry, but we'll have to disappoint you. Conventional fattening farms are factories that have nothing in common with the animal's natural habitat. The animals deserve rather better living conditions. When you take a closer look, they're anything but pleasant. But it's not only the animals that pay a high price for cheap meat. What we like to eat also makes a big impact on the environment and on other people. Sometimes on the other side of the world. Take these steaks, for example. It takes a lot of water to produce them. In fact, nearly ten times more than for a kilo of bread. Pretty wasteful, isn't it? Considering that 1.1 billion people in the world don't even have enough drinking water, and we use it to irrigate feed crops, water cows, and clean out cow sheds. Wastewater is a problem too. Liquid manure contains nitrates that seep into the soil and groundwater. A lot of animals produce a lot of manure. In fact, so much that the nitrate limits in the groundwater are often exceeded. Fun fact: the main source of drinking water in Germany is, you guessed it, groundwater. Fertilizer from fodder fields also gets into the water. The water's oxygen content often drops so sharply that animals can't live in it anymore. Like at the Mississippi estuary, a death zone covering 20,000 square kilometers. Let's stay with feed. To make the animals we want to eat grow fast, they're given concentrate. Usually, soya from huge farms in Latin America. For farmland, rainforest is cut down, one of the habitats with the highest biodiversity on Earth. Every year, Thuringen and Schleswig-Holstein disappear in Brazil. Well, not actually those German states, but a rainforest area as big as them. And then monocultures are grown there as far as the eye can see. Pesticides and fertilizers ensure that they grow fabulously, but as a result, the soil is quickly exhausted, and then new fields are needed, and more pesticides and more fertilizer. That's bad for the environment and for the people who live and work there. By the way, a lot of the people who actually live there are displaced to make room for the fields, and most of the small farmers have to give up their work. They can't compete with the mega farms' prices. Now they work there instead, with hardly any protection from the chemicals and for very low wages. For developing countries, earning income from the export of soya beans is an illusion, because the profits land in the pockets of a few very rich farmers. Almost nothing stays in the country, and the poor get poorer. Back to our steaks again. They cause any amount of greenhouse gases, you know, climate change and so on. In this case, the emissions are as high as from a car driving from Hanover to Potsdam. With pork or chicken, incidentally, you wouldn't get quite that far. What causes the emissions? Well, you have the famous farting cows and sheep, of course. Around one third results from slash and burn for feed plantations and pastures. CO2 is released, and there are no longer any forests to absorb the emissions. Another third is caused by the fertilizer for the feed. Globally, livestock farming pumps more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than all the cars, trucks, planes, and ships in the world together. Almost a billion people in the world don't get enough to eat, and high meat consumption in countries like Germany is a part of the problem. Because to produce meat, you need a lot of space. Perhaps not for the animals themselves, but to grow animal feed. A third of the world's fields are used for it, so they can't be used to grow food for people. An example: Here's a hectare of land. If you produce meat on it, there's enough for you and me. If you grow vegetables for a family, and one hectare of potatoes is enough to feed a whole football team, including the trainers and medics. While the world's population is increasing, there's less and less room to grow our food, and so our cheap, land-intensive meat turns out to be an unfair luxury, because with our present eating habits, we can't feed the world's population even now. And then there's the chicken meat thing. In Germany, we produce it by factory farming and with financial aid from the EU. The part we like most is chicken breast. The rest doesn't sell well here, so we freeze it and ship it abroad. For example, to Ghana. 
The farmers there breed chickens too, but on a small scale and without the kind of support the EU gives. So German chicken is much cheaper than chicken from Ghana, although it's travelled so far. Our cheap meat destroys the markets in West Africa and means people there can't make a living breeding livestock. So you see, our appetite for meat has serious consequences worldwide. Does that mean we should go without meat altogether? Not necessarily. There's sort of the good news and the, well, not so good news. The good news is that meat production doesn't have to cause so much damage. As we said, most of the problems are caused by the soya feed. It doesn't have to be like that because actually cows, goats and sheep normally eat, um, exactly, grass. If the animals are put out to pasture, like in the past, a lot of the problems disappear. But of course only if the pastures don't take the place of food-growing fields, people or forests. A lot of organic farmers are taking up this idea. They take care to adhere to natural cycles. Most of them grow their own feed and fertilize it with their animals' manure. They can only keep as much livestock as the environment allows. It still isn't quite as idyllic as this here. But it's an improvement. So if you eat meat, eat better meat. Now for the uh, not so good news. These methods are better, but the yields are lower. In other words, the meat costs more and there's less of it. And that brings us to what you've been secretly afraid of hearing since the film began. Ready? Here's the message. We must eat less meat. For you and me, there's no other way. It isn't healthy. No worries. Even with Veg & Co, you'll get all the nutrients you need. Protein, too, for the athletic types. But it doesn't taste good. Vegetarian means more than tofu sausage. So if you must eat meat, eat less. Of course it's hard to change your habits. But there are so many great ways of making a start. Take half-time veggies, for example. Two people get together and halve their meat consumption, on the principle that two half veggies together make one whole one. The bottom line is that our eating habits are destroying the environment and causing injustice worldwide. Is there no end to it? The answer is on your plate.